Hello out there, Indoor Gardeners. Welcome to another edition of the Indoor Gardener Podcast. I'm Greg Dreis, your host. You can look us up on Facebook at the Indoor Gardener, Greg's Lawn Service and Garden Care, as well as online on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I'd also like you to stop by our Indoor Garden Store, which is online at theindoorgarden.etsy.com for rooted cuttings, succulents, and foliage plants. It's a jungle in there, and it's full of cool plants for cool people. Today's topic is fungus gnats, those pesky little flies that you see, <clears throat> excuse me, flying around your plants, on top of your soil, in your bags of potting soil, and we're going to tell you how to, to get rid of them. Well, fungus gnats mainly show up because they find moisture. This could be from improperly stored potting soil or soil amendments at your big box stores. Hopefully, real garden centers, the independents out there, store their soils where they're not going to get soaking wet. The box stores, they just don't seem to care too much. And everybody says miracle Grow always comes with potting with the fungus gnats in it. Well, it's not true. It's just because it's stored outside and the box stores sell a lot of miracle Grow soil. <clears throat> it could come from the best Dr. Earth soil. It could come from the best Fox Farm soil if it's stored out where it's going to get wet. And fungus gnats are associated with overwatered houseplants, and the eggs can lie dormant for quite some time. In most situations, they're a cosmetic problem. However, if there's enough larvae in the soil eating organic matter, they can go after your roots and they can cause a lot of damage that way. But most of the time, they're just there to munch on some organic matter that you have in the soil. They are unsightly. And if you're selling plants, you don't want to ship out plants with fungus gnats in them. Now, what they look like, adult fungus gnats, they're delicate, uh, dark brown or black. They're about an eighth of an inch long. They have dark translucent wings that fold on their backs when they're resting. And adult fungus gnats can be distinguished from other small flies by the vein pattern on their wings. If you want to get at your magnifying glass or microscope, uh, the wings have a distinct Y-shaped set of veins near the wingtips. Fungus gnat larvae resemble pale worms with a black head. They're very, very tiny, about a quarter inch in length when mature. They're often, the adults, mistaken as fruit flies, but they're still a big pain in the neck. Fungus gnats are usually noticed indoors when adults fly around light sources or they fly around or walk across the soil of your potted plants. Fungus gnats can go through multiple generations per year. Indoors, fungus gnats tend to have overlapping generations where eggs hatch, adults come out, they fly around, lay more eggs, so there's a never-ending supply of them. The adult females lay about 200 eggs in cracks or crevices on the soil of the potted plants. The eggs typically hatch within three to six days, they go through four stages of development called instars over one to two weeks before they pupate near the surface of the soil. Uh, about four days or five days after they form, adult fungus gnats emerge. The adults are short-lived, only living for about a week. And under optimal condition, fungus gnats can go from adult to egg in about three weeks. And that cycle seems to be never-ending. <clears throat> so a number of homemade remedies are out there to get rid of them. And I prefer a three-prong approach, but first we're going to talk about the short-term controls uh, that you'll see popping up on the Facebook garden groups and others. And I want to caution you not to depend on these short-term controls because they appear to go away, but remember, there's still eggs down there in the soil and there's overlapping life cycles. As well, the eggs can lay dormant for months, a lot longer than your plants can go without water. So keep that in mind if you have them. A couple of short-term controls you'll see out there are bottom water your plants because that'll allow for water just to enter into the bottom of the pot. And the theory behind there is that the top of the soil will go dry. Fungus gnats need moisture in which to live. 
So the larvae that have already hatched, yeah, they might die off if you're bottom watering. But remember, the eggs can last a long time. And I'm not sure you want to bottom water your plants if you have as many as I have, like a couple hundred plants around the house. It's tedious and it takes a lot of time. Coupled with that is uh, they tell you, let the soil dry out before you water your plants. <clears throat> and again, that's just a short term fix because the eggs can lay dormant for months and most of your plants in your house cannot go months without watering. Some people suggest putting a layer of sand or diatomaceous earth on the top of the soil. The sand will dry out quicker. The theory is that the fungus gnats cannot fly down through the soil or through the sand on top of the soil to lay their eggs. But again, that's just a short-term fix. And after a while of continuous watering, you're going to get an open spot in the, in the sand layer, either up against the stem of the plant or where your water where sooner or later you're going to splash that sand around where the flies can get down there and lay their eggs or the larvae can hatch and, and pop out. Diatomaceous earth is a one-celled, <clears throat> very sharp creature, like silica-like from uh, the ocean bottom, and is used for insect control because it's like a very coarse sandpaper and can actually tear the body of insects apart or break the exoskeleton of other insects. However, it only works when it's dry and we got to water our house plants. And also diatomaceous earth is not something you want to be breathing because it's very abrasive and you don't want that stuff landing in your lungs. So I do not recommend diatomaceous earth. Again, it only works when it's dry. So if you're going to get tired of bottom watering, you start top watering your plants again, that diatomaceous earth is no good. Hydrogen peroxide is another short-term fix. Now, all of these suggestions here are short-term fixes, and they will work in the short term. But don't forget, and I can't reiterate this enough, that the eggs can lie dormant <coughs> for months, and our plants cannot go without water for months. And most of us are not going to be wanting to bottom water our plants for the next six or eight months. Hydrogen peroxide to me is is right up there with um, neem oil sometimes and epsom salts as just overrated over recommended and again it's only a short-term fix it will kill the larvae if it comes in contact with them it can kill the adult fungus gnats but it's not going to do anything for the unhatched eggs <clears throat> and also hydrogen peroxide is very caustic and it can damage plant tissue if it comes in contact with. And a lot of doctors now are recommending don't wash out any lacerations or cuts on your arms or legs with hydrogen peroxide, because even though it will clean it out a little bit, it also damages the surrounding tissue that's designed to heal. So it's a double-edged sword. I don't recommend it under any circumstances. And another recommendation is water your plants with soapy water. <clears throat> Again, it may smother the larvae. It may kill off some of the adult gnats, but it's not going to do anything for the larvae that are in the soil. As well, with hydrogen peroxide and soapy water, you never hear anybody tell you how much to use. They'll say, well, don't use too much. Well, your idea of too much is certainly different than mine. That's just how, how things are. And also, you'll hear Dawn or any dish detergent. There's a big difference between soap and detergent. Just because you see Dawn being used to clean crude oil off of little ducks and birds and animals after an oil spill, it doesn't mean it's gentle. They're using a detergent to clean off the crude oil because crude oil is very, it's, 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 it's horrible stuff. You need something to cut through that. And soap, Castile soap is not going to do that. A detergent, okay, like Dawn will do that. So it's not because you see the little cute little animals being cleaned off with Dawn is they need something that's going to cut through crude oil. The stuff you wash your dishes with will cut through crude oil. Imagine what it can do to the anything that comes in contact with your plants. So stay away from those. And again, the short-term controls for fungus gnats, bottom watering, let your soil dry, 
layer of sand on top of the soil, hydrogen peroxide, <clears throat> spray or water your plants with soapy water and diatomaceous earth. Short term, they may work, they may not, but it's not going to solve the problem. To get rid of fungus gnats is a long-term project. Because remember, it can take two to four weeks for the gnats to lay the eggs, let them go th through their four stages of instars, it's called, turn into the little worms, and then come out as the gnats. And a month is a long time when you have that problem. I prefer a three-prong approach, which begins with sticky traps. You'll see them listed as uh, sticky whitefly traps or aphid traps. Basically, <clears throat> they can be decorative in the shape of a leaf or a flower. They're usually yellow to attract the female flying insects. And they have very sticky tape on both sides. Put Use them judiciously around your plants. I use a bunch of them all the time because I do get fungus gnats on occasion, but I have no problem getting rid of them. The females land on the sticky traps. They die and they can no longer lay eggs. Second approach is I use a BT drench. BT is the same thing that's on those mosquito dunks, either the donuts or the granules. It is a biological fun, um, insecticide. <clears throat> it is a kind of like a, a bacteria, I believe. It's called BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, and there's all kinds of varieties, Kerstaki this and other things like that. It's the same uh, type of thing you use for grubs in your garden. I use a liquid form, so that way when I'm watering my plants with the BT already in, suspended in the water, the soil gets drenched top to bottom. Just sprinkling the mosquito bits across the top of the soil, you may miss an area, or if you mix it in with your soil, you may miss some places from the top to bottom. Please do not soak mosquito bits in water and then apply them to the soil. That is not how they are designed to be used. They are designed to be sprinkled on top of the soil or mixed in with the soil and then watered in. And then when you water, it releases the BT into the soil that will kill the larval stage. Soaking them in water, you may not extract all the BT, kind of like the banana tea phenomenon, where you soak your banana peels in water and you think you're getting all the potassium out. You're not. Don't soak them in water. Put them on the soil, <clears throat> water them in. And then the final thing I like to do is use systemic granules in the soil. And again, that's applied to the top of the soil, top of the pot. It's watered in. It's taken up by the roots. And it also, for the fungus gnats and the larvae, it works on contact. But also, when you get the larvae feeding on your roots, they are ingesting those systemic granules. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, will do in the larval stage. And it can even kill the adults if they happen to start coming in contact with that as well on top of or in the soil as they're moving around. So keep your potting soil dry. Don't believe that all miracle Grow comes with fungus gnats in it. It's all how it's stored at the store. <clears throat> and again, box stores don't care about you. They're going to store all that soil out in the rain, let it get holes in it, and chances are you're going to bring not only bad fungus, but other critters, including fungus gnats, into your soil. So just to recap, fungus gnats can lay an egg. And in one to two weeks, it turns into a larval stage. And then the fly, it can do this all in about three to four weeks. There's overlaying generations in the soil. So as some are eggs, some are larval, some are the adults. The short-term controls will only stop usually the adult stage or maybe get rid of the larvae, but they will not do anything to the eggs. So I recommend staying away from bottom watering, drying the soil, a sand layer on top, hydrogen peroxide, soapy water, or diatomaceous earth. You're not going to end permanently your fungus gnat situation with that. The best way is a three-prong approach. 
sticky traps, which attract the adult gnats. They land on it. They die. They can't lay eggs. A BT soil drench in the soil will kill the larval stage. And finally, systemic granules will kill the larval stage if they happen to start munching on the roots of your plants. You do this, and within a couple of weeks, you will see a drastic reduction in the quantity of your fungus nets. For more information, you can look me up online uh, at the Indoor Garden on Facebook, Greg's Lawn Service and Garden Care on Facebook. You can send a message here to Anchor. You can also comment on YouTube. And I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Please stop by the indoorgarden.etsy.com for some great soils, some great plants, rooted cuttings. I just did some pothos enjoy the other day. Uh, new cuttings in rock wool of pothos Brazil are going up, as well as I got quite a few. Uh, Bonnie spider plants that I just potted up. So stop by. It's the indoorgarden.etsy.com. And if you have any questions, again, look us up on Facebook. And thank you so much for listening to the Indoor Gardener podcast. I'm Greg Dreis, and you can find us on Anchor and Spotify for audio. Video uploads will be on YouTube. And tell your friends. And again, if you have any questions, holler up. Have yourselves a great day and enjoy your plants.